Hi all, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we'll learn how to shoot lasers from a jet fighter plane or any other game object that we want. So I've already set up a basic scene. So I have imported, you know, this particular asset from the Unity store for free. I'll share the link to this asset in this video's description. So in order to shoot lasers, we first need to set up our laser object. So let's set up that thing. I'll create a new 3D object of type cylinder. Let's move it over here. Now let's resize it. Let's decrease from X axis like this. Decrease from here, from Y axis and from Z axis as well. Let's keep it really small. Yeah. Let's remove move it like this. <laughs> yeah. So this looks good. I think I can make it a little more small. Yeah. Okay. Now let's set the color. First I'll rename it laser. Now let's create a material for this. Call it laser underscore M for M for material. Now set the color to an orange one, maybe. Yeah. Let's keep it metallic. Let's remove. I think this much is fine. Click on emission again. This okay. So now let's give this material to our laser game object. Okay, so now our laser looks like this. Just move it over here. Something happened. Let's resize it a little more. And now it's looking fine. Hmm, yeah, now it looks fine. Now let's do one more thing. Uh, let's set up a script machine for the laser game object. For doing that, we first need to add a rigid body to a laser object. Let's remove the gravity because we don't want that. Now let's add script machine. Let's get a new one for laser. Let's graph. Now what we want to do is uh, we want to set its movement so that it always moves in the y direction like over here in the positive y direction. So we'll simply call fix update method. We'll set the velocity like this. Get velocity. Okay. Get x. Get z. And for y, we'll set up our move speed. Let's keep it ten as of now. Let's pass this ten over here. Now let's test it out. So this should constantly move in the positive y direction. Yep, so it's working fine. Let me just change the value to a little less, say five. Yep, 
Yep, so now it's working fine. As movement is all good. Now let's do one thing. Let's create this as a prefab. I'll create a new folder. Call it as prefab. over here so now our laser object is a prefab and we can spawn as many as we want based on the requirements now let's delete this now what you want we want to spawn these laser objects from here and here so let's do one thing let's create an empty game object we will spawn point this should be over here somewhere here yeah i think over here is fine hmm. so this is the position So this has to be like this. Let's duplicate it. Move this one to the right side. So now we have two spawn points. Spawn point two. Hmm. Now let's go back to our script graph for our jet fighter so let's go over here now what we want to do is as soon as we press our left mouse button we should spawn the laser game object how can we do that so click on on mouse then on mouse input button should be left and action should be hold let's move it to hold so as soon as this is pressed on the mouse the left mouse button has been pressed we need to spawn the uh, laser game object so for doing that we first need to create a variable over here let's call it laser of type game object and the game object should be laser yep this one now there is one node that we can use for spawning it's called instantiate this one game object instantiate so it takes three values the first one is the object the game object that we want to spawn so we want to spawn the laser game object over here the position should be our spawn point so let's create two more variables spawn point one let's put it like this point let's get one more spawn point two of type game object in the game object should be spawn point two now in the position we want to pass the position of spawn point now we'll use get position node over here transform get position in the rotation we'll simply pass quaternion dot identity this means that the object doesn't have any rotation so this was for one spawn point we want to do the same thing for this one so let's do this let's just copy all this like this paste it in 
this should be spawn point two and thing remains the same let's go back let's just try it out so now if i press my mouse button they should spawn the game object so we'll see it spawns so many game objects or our laser objects now we want to restrict the spawning of these lasers so that it only spawns after a set interval so that our jet fighter plane doesn't look like this so let's go back let's create two more variables called as time between spawns this should be of type float let's keep it at zero and a start time again be float let's keep it as 0.4 maybe yeah now over here on start we want to set time between spawns with the value of start time on our update event we want to check First, we want to check whether the value of time between spawns is less than or equal to zero. If it is not equal to zero, then we want to decrease its value. So let's set set time between spawns. Subtracting generic, and this should subtract with time dot delta time. So we'll use this node over here. We'll pass the value over here. That's it for the update method. Now going back to our mouse input. Now first we want to check before spawning any object. First, we, we need to check the same condition like if start time is less than or equal to zero, only then we should spawn our laser objects. Otherwise, we should not. Now, once these are spawned, then we want to set the time between spawns with a value of start time. Let's do one more thing for our laser game object. Go back to the skip machine. Let's do one thing. We should destroy this game object after two seconds of this object getting instantiated or spawned. So we'll use a node called as game object destroy. Then it takes two parameters, the object and the time. So the object over here would be the current object, which is the laser and the time should be, let's keep it at two right now. Okay. Okay. So now let's try, let's keep it maximized. One, you see now. Yep. So it's working fine. It's waiting for the interval. Now, if I change the value again, let's keep it a little bit low. The spawn time 0.2 maybe. Now let's test it out. Now it's really small. 0.3. Again, really small. Let's keep it as 0.4 only. Try it out. So 
you see now our objects are also getting destroyed so that's it for this lecture i'll see you in the next one thank you